Thanks to the USGA and the MGA for inviting me to be a part of the program. And I think this will segue nice uh, past Adam's talk. It was a nice kind of a uh, layout for, for me to get onto uh, something very biased to the bent grass side. I think he talked a lot about Poe, but uh, very much to the bent. And I thought I would uh, start by introducing you to the Stanwich Club. I'm sure there are people here that don't know too much about Stanwich. Uh, the course was uh, founded in 1962, so we're just 50 years old. Uh, it was a William and David Gordon design uh, with the Tom Fazio uh, restoration of ma master plane in 05. We have 500 members. We do about 20,000 rounds a year. Uh, 74.55 from the back, and we have uh, bent grass, greens, tees, and fairways. And uh, thanks to Golf Digest, we're uh, ranked number one in Connecticut. Uh, we've hosted a number of events, uh, the USGA's Mid-Am, uh, Golden Lights, that's an LPGA event, Palmer Cup, that's a Ryder Cup format for colleges with Arnold Palmer as a sponsor. Uh, Cannon Cup, that's a national junior event. And we've hosted uh, most of the Med Area local events at least once. And then as far as on the course, uh, we did this master plan in uh, 05 and 06 and we really kind of worked the place over. Uh, we softened the contours on seven greens and, and built those to USGA. That was to get more cup and area. As you, if you had a hurt stand, you had very slopey greens, so we, we softened those quite a bit. Actually, now I have eight USGA greens. I had one before, so I have eight USGAs and 14 native soil greens. And we rebuilt all the bunkers, added 25 new fairway bunkers, so now we have 90. Uh, built 22 new tees, 10 forward and 12 back, added over 300 yards. We call this kind of a modernization of the, of the course. Uh, redirected and recontoured five fairways. And then in 06, to kind of finish up, uh, we dredged six ponds and a half mile stream. Uh, we removed uh, 37,000 cubic yards of silt, which we lost in the roughs. That was about six acres to regrass. grass uh, Installed a new pump house. Here you can see we put in the wet well there for vertical turbines. Uh, retrofit the irrigation system to a Toro VP with a Lynx software. Uh, we paved car paths, added drainage, removed, uh, now we're getting close to 2,000 trees. They told me to stop counting, but you know, it's a habit, I guess. And uh, total cost of that plan was about $5 million. Give you a little contrast. They built the entire golf course in 1962 for $495,000. That's about a 10x over that period of time. So a little inflation there. And that was just to touch it up. And we've got one, one more nice project we're really looking forward to this fall, uh, which is a new maintenance building. Uh, we're going to build this into the side of a hill, so we're kind of hidden. Uh, about 20,000 square feet and 3.7 mil for that one. Okay, our reasons for regrassing, um, most of Adam pretty much covered all of them, all these shortcomings of the Poe annual. And I might also mention, if you don't, you know, one of the things about Poe pe people don't understand, they just think it's, it's Poe. Well, there's many different kinds of Poe, just like there's many different kinds of bent grass. And you've got some good ones. There's some that don't seed much, they don't get much disease. There, there are some real stars there. And then, of course, you know, you got some real dogs at the bottom, too, and, and everything in between. So at your course, you know, it's kind of luck of the draw. You know, there's a volunteer, you know, you might get a good one and, and then you might not. So, you know, some of those courses, the, these top ten, they've been doing it for a long time and over, over uh, you know, many decades, it selects out for the stronger ones. So you're going to select for, for better varieties over time. Um, but there are, you know, all these things he was recently talking about, anthracnose, summer patch, the seed heads, winter damage potential each year, wilting, a lot of wilting in the summer. Uh, annual bluegrass weevils. And then of course the alternative is to go to these new bent grasses which are you know bred for putting greens. These things are you know it's no accident here you can go to the, you know pick one out that you like and you pretty much know what you get and they have all this you know genetic superiority bred into the into the plant. Things like disease resistance, drought tolerance, just tolerant of low cutting heights and get fast I think you can get faster speeds easier a uh, nice consistent ball roll and, and they look nice. So, very biased to bent, obviously. Uh, now this decision was actually about 15 years in the making. Back in the, in the middle 90s when uh, uh, there was, there was courses being, new courses being built in the Met area and I played on those courses and put on some of those new greens. I was really impressed and you know, the quality of them was, was you know, really, really something. So uh, out of my curiosity, we thought, uh, you know, let's see how it looks at Stanley. So I, I got 25 bent grasses and planted them in our nursery back in 05. 10 foot square plots in triplicate. 
And the idea was to see which, uh, which ones would be the best for our site. After a couple years, uh, it was pretty evident. You, you go to the plots and look at them. Some just really stuck out as being you know, denser and you know, really nice looking uh, A4, G2, and Century. And I'll show you a plot plan. Here's, uh, you see they have the three reps there. And um, I just read through a couple of names for the superintendents to recognize some of these. Uh, G2, Crenshaw, uh, Penn Eagle, Penn Cross, Penn Lynx, L93, uh, SR1020. Uh, A4, G6, just to mention a few. So, but today, there's even dozens more. I mean, they just keep on, you know, um, um, whatever, uh, coming up with these new grasses. And, uh, you know, there's some really good ones. So, frankly, when you go shopping for one, I don't think you can miss. You know, there are really good ones out there. And here's something interesting. I took this picture last uh, spring. This is, you know, we stopped marking out all these plots, but uh, there is some Poe in that green. and. And um, the A4 plots, you know, jump right out at you when the Poe is in seed because there's very little Poe in there. All by themselves, they keep a lot of Poe out. Not 100% clean, but, but pretty good. Okay, the decision came in uh, August of 2009. We've been battling anthracnose for about five years. Never really lost any grass over it, but you know, I had this nuisance amount. We just couldn't seem to clean it up. And then uh, in that summer, you know, we lost a little grass, which was new to me, new to us, and uh, so we said, you know, we've been talking about this for about 15 years, you know, you know we got decisions here, let, you know, let's, let's do it. So we went with um, a blend of two grasses, 50% each, A1 and A4, and we used uh, wash sod, which doesn't have any soil on it. The whole idea of that is if you buy your sod from a sod farm and they cut it with the soil, a lot of times it can be very fine textured, kind of clay. You put that on your, your sandy green, and, and what will happen is the soil or the the water will hang up in that clay soil and, and, and often the roots won't go down in. So uh, you have potential for failure there. So if you take all the soil off, you're pretty much just laying down a carpet, then uh, you don't have to worry about the you know, failure because of that. And uh, so what they did is they played all their tournaments that year, did their outings you know, on October 12th, gave us the course for the project, and then we opened in the spring as soon as possible. You know, a few obligatory conditions for success is certainly a well-drained root zone. You don't want to go and you know, put all, all this effort, time, and, and money, and put your new bent on, uh, you know, poor surfaces uh, or, you know, not well-drained root zone that's going to, you know, cause you problems. So you need a really good uh, root zone to put it down on. Eight hours of sunlight. Uh, the bent grass uh, does have a high light requirement, so you may need to cut some trees down. Adequate air movement. This is really with any grass, whether you're growing pole or bent grass. If you've got real pocketed spots, you're going to have issues with diseases and uh, maybe it's staying too wet or whatnot, so you need to do things about that, perhaps fans. And then finally, a concrete control for po a concrete plan for pole control. Um, particularly on an older golf course, you've got plenty of pole seed around, and, and it's, there's going to be pressure for it to come back in. So you need to know ahead of time, you know, how am I going to do that? How are we going to stay clean? So I threw this in uh, some options. I'll certainly will show you how we did it, but here's other ways that you could approach this at your club. One is to uh, shell out all your greens and build a USGA root zone in all of them and then seed it. Now this takes the biggest wedge of time. You may need to you know, close your greens on August 1st and you may not be playing on all of them until Memorial Day of the next year. So you're gonna have loss of revenue, your members need a place to play, and you know, there's a, lot of, a pretty big uh, time factor in that one. Another one is you can do that, but then sod them, so that's gonna save you some time because you don't have to build up that thatch to, to play on that new seed. So then maybe you're starting August 1st, but you're playing in April. So that's a little less time, but still some loss of revenue there. Another way is keep your root zone that you have and then uh, add what we call XGD, which stands for existing greens drainage. You're putting slit drains in your existing greens. Uh, and the seed, you've still got that pretty wide window because it takes time to get the seed established and you know, strong enough to, to withstand play. So again, probably August to sometime in May. And then if you use your root zone plus XGD and, and sod, it's, it's a much smaller window. You start in September, playing out in April. Not so bad. And then the way we did it, um, which was the easiest, maybe the you know, most least disruptive of all, uh, we have you know, eight USGAs and 14 of the push-ups, and all our push-ups already had the XGD in them. So all we had to do was pretty much you know, sod off, sod on. So they gave me the course in mid-October, and by early April we're playing on it. So no loss of revenue. They didn't really lose use of their course very much, so you know, very little pain for the members uh, if you're lucky enough to do it this way. Okay, and then, you know, we talk about shelling them out and building this USGA green. Now, this particular site here, we did all the, 
the surrounds as well and bunkers, but you know, assuming you like what you have with that, you would just cut out where the green is, about 18 inches down. You, put, you see the drainage in the bottom there, and there's a gravel layer, then you put your root zone mix in and cedar sod, and, and that's it. So that's what that looks like. Okay, now we had to uh, pick a company to, to buy our sod from. And uh, of course, I, I hunted around, made a lot of calls to try to find the best product, find a company with a good reputation. And uh, I, I stumbled onto this group called Stormy Acres Company in South Jersey. And it turns out they were supplying sod to Augusta National for about 15 years. So I called down Augusta to get a you know, review from, on these guys. And uh, sure enough, they gave him a glowing report. You know, got sod every year, great sod and all that. So I figured, well, if it's good enough for Augusta, it ought to be good enough for us. So we signed on with, with Stormy Acres, and I, I went down there, I looked at their grass. Uh, theirs is about 3 eighths thick, 3 eighths inches of thatch, which, which is ideal, uh, versus another farm we looked at down there close by. Uh, also had very nice grass, but a little thicker, about a half inch, a little thatch to deal with there. And that comes down to how old was it, you know, nine months versus 13 months. And so then, um, it's the middle of uh, October, and the, the, the project is going along nice. We had seven greens all stripped and ready for for some sod, and I was really excited. This, you know, first day, a whole truck has come. It's about 10 in the morning. I'm sitting in my office, and, and the phone rings, and there's a lawyer on the end of the phone, and he tells me that he's representing Stormy Acres. They've gone out of business. No sod coming today, and no sod coming anytime soon. So it's one of those <laughs> times in your life you never forget. I can picture the day like it was yesterday. So a couple of moments of shock there, and trepidation, but, you know, fortunately for me, uh, the guy says, okay, I remember now. I bid it with another company, East Coast, and theirs was a little thicker, but still was, was nice grass, and uh, uh, I was lucky. They were also happy to get the job, so within two days, they had, you know, truck loads starting to come, and I can't say enough good about the, that East Coast uh, sod farm down there. They, they were just great. We still buy a lot of stuff from them. Okay, now, in, in getting ready to put the sod down, one thing we need to deal with also, and and you may have this, you all have this on your course if you have uh, poa greens, which is, we call it a seed bank. It's been dropping seeds for years, so your, your soil underneath there has got seed, all, viable seed all up through the profile. So what are we going to do about that? Uh, one thing is to fumigate. You can use a product called methyl bromide. Uh, not an option for us because it's not, uh, not licensed in Connecticut. Bassam is another one, but there's a 10-day waiting period. We didn't have the time. And then another one is to remove an inch of sod. They did a study at a university and they found out that, you know, as they take off layers, by the time you get down to an inch, most of that seed is not viable anymore, you know, over 90%. So you're getting rid of most of it that way. So that was our approach. Okay, now while we got the grass off, we got opportunities to really, you know, work on those greens. You can change contours, you can, uh, you know, add areas, you can put drainage in. So we, we did some things uh, on all our native ones. We poked a lot of holes and put a lot of sand in and improve on the drainage. Uh, we also added XGD on, on two greens. Um, what happened there, back in 97, when we did them all, we skipped two spots. We had two greens that uh, parts of them were so dry, we said, you know, it doesn't need it. So we skipped those. Well, over time, those became the wettest areas. So we went back to do those two. And then we did expansions on the sides of uh, six greens. A little comment about our, uh, our temporaries. Use a six-inch cup, and we cut these out in the fairway there. And, you know, those are kind of fun if you're, you're just playing for fun and, you know, we have a match or whatever, but you can really make putts in a six-incher. It's a lot more fun. There's a little one of our temporaries there. All right, and there's I talk about this XGD, existing greens. There's some Canadian co company gave it that acronym, but existing greens drainage. Now it's uh, a lot of you probably have this in your greens. Uh, these trenches are six feet apart. They're 15 inches deep. There's a two-inch pipe in the bottom. And then you fill it up with a uh, root zone material. This is one of the best inventions ever for existing greens, they, you know, improve on the drainage and the, the quality of those greens. Uh, here's one we raised by a couple feet. It was too steep on one end. There's an expansion on the side there. Okay, now preparing the USGA greens, actually this is pretty easy. If you have USGA with poe on them and you want to regrass the bent, pretty easy process. Uh, you know, we cut the sod, move it down to the original sand layer, to your original root zone, rake and roll till it's nice and smooth, you put on some fertilizer, and put your new sod on. So that, those are pretty simple. Those, those came real fast for us. And there they are, taken off in chunks. Uh, you can see uh, it's about an inch thick. This particular green here, we gave the POA to another club, wanted some POA annuals, so we, we just gave them some grass, but that's why that was cut off of there. Okay, now the native greens, 
Uh, we did a lot more to them, and I'll kind of go through this quickly, but we punched a lot of holes and, and filled them all with top dress and improved on the drainage. And uh, we used a couple different kinds of uh, air fires and then dragged it in. Um, here's a, this is a deep tine. This goes in 10 inches, 3 quarter inch tine. We did them all a couple times with this and filled it in. Some way to find out how much weight you need on, a ro on the drag mat. And then we used this uh, Procore, actually did four times with this, filled all those. That's a 5 eighths tine, uh, 3 to 4 inches deep. And in between those, the, 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 uh, the contractor came in and took off the inch of sod. But, uh, so that allowed us to get a lot of, a lot of sand into the profile. Okay, then the last thing we did was uh, uh, we would take out our verticutter and we verticut the greens two ways to kind of mix the seed or the sand and the soil together, got them nice and smooth for the sodding process. And they, they all look like that when we gave them to the contractor for the sod. Okay, the totals were we used a couple hundred tons in those 14 greens. That's a lot of sand. And, and uh, I have to say that the drainage in those is nearly as good as the USGA's. It, between XGD being in there and then all this sand and holes that worked out great. A couple of shots and the guys getting it ready. Uh, they had all kinds of tools for, you know, they raked and rolled and dragged. And by the time it was ready for the sod, it was like, like a pool table. I mean, you could, you could putt on that. Okay, then when we laid the sod, we worked off of plywood on the grass. And we sodded the, the green and the collar with our A1, A4. Uh, we put a strip of uh, Kentucky bluegrass around the outside edge, kind of framed everything nice, looked really good. Uh, then out in the approach, if we had pole going out towards the fairway, we, we cut that pole out and put, put bent grass there. Okay, there, I, I talk about this wash sod. Here's a, there's a piece up here, if you want to come up and see it. Uh, I have to thank Mike Hollander from East Coast for bringing this, but uh, there's a big chunk of that. Um, it's just grass like a piece of carpet without any soil on it. And uh, so there they are, laying the sod. They work off the plywood, it helps keep everything nice and smooth. They don't, don't get on the soil and you know, mess that up and uh, packs it down as they go. Okay, the timing again, they, they played all their events and outings and gave me the course on October 12th. We did the whole job in three weeks. Uh, I was ready to use two contractors if necessary. We really wanted to be done by November 1. And the idea, so we had the whole month of November and you know, December happened to be nice, you know, the rest of the fall to get the roots established. And I didn't want to have to use covers that winter. Uh, okay, another, ju just a couple uh, comments about the site conditions and, you know, removing trees so you can get that eight hours of sunlight. Um, we, uh, we took out about 150 trees. I have to say it didn't affect play at all. I think a lot of the green sites that kind of highlighted them because they weren't in the shade. They, I think they look better. Um, as far as improving air movement, fortunately for us, we don't have any real pocket of greens, but certainly fans are they're, they're a great thing. If you have a need for one, uh, they can really fix up a green that's having issues because of air movement. And then here's something that's, uh, you know, for courses that have, uh, you maybe have some, some greens that are shade and there's nothing you can do about the shade, whether it's a mountain or, or neighbor's trees or something you can't cut down. There's a new bent grass out called Crystal Blue Lynx, uh, just out last year from Tea and Green Company. And this one is uh, extraordinarily uh, shade tolerant, uh, three hours of sunlight requirement. So this is a great grass, good on all your greens, but if you just wanted to use it on some shady ones, you know, there, there's this option now, and I think you'll see more coming on. So, because I know for some clubs that's a, that inhibits them doing is they got, well, they got these shaded greens, and what are they gonna do? But if you can get three hours of sunlight, you have an option there. Okay, then to manage that sod, obviously we, you know, it's real thin, so we, we water a few times every night. Uh, it does root in seven to 10 days in the middle of October. As you get closer to November, it takes two to three weeks. It really slows down, but it's all, you know, as you would expect, temperature dependent. Uh, and it was all well rooted by uh, December. There's how it looks when the roots are going in. I spent that whole fall just going around pulling on those corners, waiting to feel that little tug back. And uh, you know, another green was rooted. Here's how they look going into winter. Really, they look like a million bucks without anybody playing on them, no ball marks or anything. We were working the height down. Here you can see the, uh, well this one has two strips of K blue. All the rest we just put one around. But, uh, and then as we went into the winter, we put a heavy top dressing on and fertilized them. Uh, to finish up that, that year. Okay, then we opened that first spring on April 10th, the speed of 10 and a half. Now, as luck would have it, uh, that, that March, early April, w was nice weather, not like this year. And I got a lot of heat to open early. And, uh, you know, I didn't think they were ready, though. I wanted to get top dressing on, get the height down, and get them rolled. And so we got good, good reviews that first weekend. It was important, I thought. So, uh, and it worked out well. They, they were rolling nice that first day. Uh, now that thatch reduction, that's our biggest challenge. We've got about a half inch of thatch and that cushion is not good for playability, uh, not good for speed. So we need to get that diluted and 
put a lot of top dressing in it. So we top dress a little every week that year. Um, all we did for cultivation, we did this two tenths tine, a little needle tine every three weeks. And then that fall, we really got into a comprehensive uh, solid tine aerification and filling the holes. Now we don't pull cores out because although we took off an inch, there's still some viable seed in there. So we're going to just poke holes and dilute. That's our, our program. And, and our, our, re our data from our uh, soil uh, specialist shows that our thatch layers are going, thatch percentages are going down. In our first year, we had speeds of 10 to 12 feet. And it was around the 4th of July when we would hit 12, and some members were getting real excited in order to start to see the benefits of the, this new grass we got. Uh, there's my tools of the, the trade there. Monitor that new sod on, from the right there, stint meter. Then we have a soil uh, uh, profiler there to check the roots. Then the third one is a, uh, uh, to set the height, the accu gauge for the height of the mowers, which we fill around with a lot. Then you have a prism. I can actually measure the height of the grass on the green, and then a soil thermometer on the left there. There's our roots that first spring. We had four and a half inches of roots. Down the bottom there, you can see that half inch of thatch. Fortunately, the sod farm, they were putting a little, little top dressing in there, so it wasn't you know, totally soft, but um, pretty good roots in a short amount of time. There's the USGA that first spring. Again, about four and a half inches of roots. Okay, in year two, we had uh, thatch layer partially reduced. Uh, I could cut a little bit lower. Speeds were better, 10 and a half to 12 and a half, so things were progressing. And then at year three, I told the members that we'd have, uh, the sow would be fully mature and we start to see the full benefits of, of our new grass. And uh, sure enough, the thatch was getting under control and the greens were firmer. Uh, I could pretty much cut as low as I wanted. And uh, we had speeds of 11 and a half to up to 14 and a half. And that's one thing, these grasses are bred for speed, for private clubs that like fast greens. And really, we just are cutting a roll. You know, when the weather gets on your side, like in uh, you know, May and June and September, October, you hit those 14s. You know, they just happen. Um, we don't get a lot of them, but uh, you know, that, that's the potential of it. Uh, most of the time, we kind of live in the 12s and 13s, and again, we're just a cut and a roll, so these, these things can get speed without uh, a whole lot of effort. And of course, excellent putting quality. Okay, the total cost, we spent uh, 200000 that fall, and uh, that was for two and a half acres. Now, unfortunately for us, that was the, you know, the lowest part of the re recession, you know, and everybody was just happy to get work, so we got a great price on the labor and a great pi price on the sod, so obviously you pay, pay some more now. Okay, finally, uh, the pole control program. Uh, this was the number one fear of the members, you know, was, you know, can you keep the pole out? You know, of course I told them, of course I could, but. So here was, here was the things that, that we had in, in, in place. Uh, we handpicked as we first started to see plants come out. Uh, solid tine aerifying again so we don't pull out any seed. Uh, we use these P PGRs or like cutlass trim, it's another one, they help inhibit the poe annua. Uh, acidification, now if you can get the, uh, the pH of the soil down into the middle fives, it's, it's less conducive to poe growth and, and more pro bent grass. So we use this, this product, ammonium thiosulfate fertilizer from the plant food company, which I really like, and this is working great for us, getting the pHs down. Uh, Benzolite, that's a pre-emergent herbicide that we use uh, three times a year. Uh, keep a nice solid turf cover, makes sense. Now at the time, in, in 09, I told them we had these herbicides in the pipeline which were going to really help us. Uh, one was called methylzolin and amacarbazone. They didn't even have any names yet. Um, now this methylzolin, now it does have a name, it's called Poacure. I think it's a good name. And this molecule was discovered by uh, the Mogul Research Center, which is a small company in South Korea. Now what they were doing, they were screening uh, molecules for herbicides for the rice industry. And then they stumbled on this one here to seem to control all kinds of poe in it, but that was it. Luckily they knew what they had, they were guys were golfers, so they, they figured out what they had there. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying, you know, about 30, 40, 50 years from now, they say, what were some of the real game changers in the industry? This is going to be one of them right here, because in my mind it's game over for control, controlling poe in bent grass. And frankly, all grasses for that matter, this, this stuff is really something. Um, works on all cool season and all nor uh, warm season grasses with no, you know, no injury. Um, you can eliminate the pole quickly or slowly. For us, we put it like two apps on in the fall. It's like a couple of fungicide applications. For all the little spots we have, they come out in the spring and they're, they're just dead. It's very simple. Now, if you've got a lot of pole, you can even up to say 50%, you do it in the springtime and you adjust your rates and intervals and you can kind of ease it out of there and take it all the way back to 100% bent grass with this uh, product. It's uh, pretty remarkable. They call that artistic approach. Uh, safe for the environment, toxicity is about the same as table sugar. Uh, it's pending registration in Australia, Japan. 
already have it in Korea and being used on many golf courses there, uh, the U.S. and Canada. And, and right now, in the U.S., they have 166 clubs that have a demonstration kit where they can treat a couple thousand square feet uh, to kind of see how it works. And then those same clubs will be part of an EUP or experimental use permit uh, program next year. They can treat up to six acres. And, you know, it's enough material to uh, get, your, get your grass clean. So a lot of people are going to know by the time this hits the market in 2016, uh, you know, it'll be all around the country. I think a lot of guys will be clamoring to get their hands on this, uh, particularly people with, with new bent greens. There's a, from the demonstration kit, there's a little bottle of liquid gold there. There's one of our plots. We did a lot of plots on our nursery with Yukon, studying different rates and timings and whatnot to figure out what's, uh, they pretty much already knew the best ones, but try to figure out what the tolerances were. There you can see a little plot. That was just two light applications in the fall. We come out in the spring and cleaned it up pretty good. Okay, now this other product, uh, now amacarbazone, is called Exonerate. came out from Risk of Life Sciences last year. Uh, and this is available in 46 states now, but as usual, it's not available in, in New York yet. And um, this one has the potential to be a good polar control material. Selectivity on many grasses, but the rates are still being fine-tuned. Fortunately, they came out with it last year, and they really weren't ready because people use it like they said and still burned up bent grass with it. And, you don't want that to happen. You don't want any, any failures like that, even at UConn. So the rates are still being fine-tuned. Uh, the elimination of the pole is quick. Um, so anyway, do your own testing with this and be careful. Our, our tests actually went pretty good on our nursery and plots that, that we use. But uh, you know, when you hear other guys having issues, you know, you're going to tread lightly until they, they figure it out. But I think, again, this one could be going forward another good one. And I think Syngenta, BASF, Bayer, those companies, they love to have products like this, so they're all you know, going to be trying to develop these over, the, over time. So there's, you know, for bent grass in the future, things are looking good. Okay, to sum up the benefits of our bent greens, uh, less water use and syringing. Obviously, we had much deeper rooted plant here, so we don't, uh, you know, we're going out syringing this maybe once, twice, and it you know, be rare, and then we're going home, to, different than POA. Um, less fungicides, I think I'm using about half now. I uh, haven't seen any diseases to date, so really good with that. Consistent speed with less effort, as you can see, you know, just really with a cut and a roll, uh, the speeds that we get, you know. We, we don't go below 11. It's last year, we never went below 11. 11 and a half is like a, those are the slow days. If you like fast greens and if you don't have very contoured greens. Of course, I got to hit the flat spots with the cup cutter when, when it's 14, as you can imagine. Um, reduction of risk. Now, you can't really put a dollar figure on this, but, you know, there's that long list of issues that you need to deal with. And, you know, with plenty of money, you can with POA. But with the bent grass, as long as you water it right and you don't kind of wear it out on your own, you know, I feel real comfortable, uh, you know, much more relaxed with this than I do with the poa greens that not, not too much can go wrong, really. And then, in, you know, bottom line is happy golfers. I think, you know, Stanwich made a decision. It's probably a 30, maybe a 50-year decision to get rid of their poa and go to bent grass, and they're going to have nice greens for, for a long time to come, and, you know, so far, so good. So that's the Stanwich story. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Our annual budget is uh, very close to 1.5. Yeah. How is that going to get uh, the um, Let's see, just in the, if you get into the fungicide part of it, um, you know, we're probably saving uh, about 20000 there. And then, uh, you know, I don't really, it's hard to put a number on how much, you know, as far as the labor and, and syringing, that sort of thing and other stuff. But Frank, I haven't done the, the numbers on that. I know it is less, but I can't really give you. I think if you, you know, to Adam's points there, that they actually tried to quantify it. It's a little tough, but uh, in that article from GCSAA. Yeah. yeah. Um, now that you've switched over to the bent grass, have you changed uh, opening and closing of the downpour? Are, are you open for the winter play, things like that? Uh, we stay open all the time. In the winter, I might close for like just soft conditions, freezing and thawing, but. Uh, you know, my, my thing on that is I, I never really, because we don't get a lot of play. You know, we, don't, we do some rounds consistently, but only a few rounds. And uh, I always just thought it was too cold for, ger for germination of poa during those winter months when people were out there. And I haven't seen that, you know, we've been open for, gee, the last 20 years, all winters, and never could say that the golfers did some damage. But again, probably because we don't have a lot of play.
Well, it is real important. One thing you want to consider, like you know, we've cut 150 trees down, I mean, ideally you get that eight hours of sunlight if you can. Um, if you can't remove that shade, if you can get the three hours, I will get with those guys with tea and green and look at all the research and everything, but that crystal blue links, if you want to know you want to have bent grass, there's an, an option to, to use in those shaded areas. Yeah, gen generally it's uh, going to be like six to nine months um, when they can still, it's strong enough that they can wash it, it doesn't fall apart. Uh, we bought stuff that was 13 months, so it was, obviously it was growing and getting thicker, but yeah, so um, they, if you tell them you want sod and they start it in the springtime, they could be washing it for you, you know, late summer. Yeah, 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 for us, you know, the first couple years was a little... Uh, we don't do any vertical cutting and grooming. Uh, we just, you know, we top just a little every week and uh, you know, we, we double cut, we cut low. That grass grows really up straight, um, upright. This isn't a real creeper of a grass. Um, it doesn't grow sideways very quickly. And so at the heights that we cut, there, there's really nothing to, so all we're worried about is diluting it with our top dressing. So we do that and frankly, we haven't done any grooming or vertical cutting yet. And they're nice and, you know, stand, stand up straight. No, actually, uh, you know, if you follow the research, they show that you know, whether you pull a core out or punch in a hole, as long as you fill it with sand, you know, six months down the road, the research shows that the, the amount of organic matter is the same either way. So there's really no need to pull a core out of there. So, and, and you know, every year we send plugs up to Norm Hummel cores, and you know, we're really tracking that. And sure enough, our thatch levels are going down using that approach. So, yeah, we, we don't plan to change that. Right, didn't include the XGD on those two greens, which was small, it was, you know, only a few thousand square feet. Okay, maybe one more back here. What was the overall cost of the project, including removing 150 trees all in? What was the total amount to get this done? I kind of tried to separate that out, because, uh, but, um, you know, we did a lot of the, some of the cleanup ourselves, and I think in the tree work there, maybe I spent uh, 20,000 on that part of it. You know, where they come in, they, they get them on the ground, and we did the cleanups, so that saved some there. But obviously, it, how many trees are you going to do, you know? Big, big change there. Uh, maybe right, one more. Let's see. Which one downside? Downside. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> I like Pancras. It's like, it's all good for me. <laughs> Uh, maybe if you had really contoured greens, I was talking to a guy this morning, very contoured greens and, you know, you, you only need speed at, say, 10. Uh, you know, do you want this kind of grass? Maybe not the A1, A4, but do you want something maybe you don't have to, it's going to get that fast. These will get pretty slick. Yeah. Thank you.